Rococo set of personification figurines of the four elements, 1760s, Chelsea porcelain allegories of the classical elements, by Giuseppe Archimboldo. From top left, clockwise, air, fire, water, and earth. Classical elements typically refer to water, earth, fire, air, and ether, which were proposed to explain the nature and complexity of all matter in terms of simpler substances. Ancient cultures in Greece, Tibet, and India had similar lists, sometimes referring in local languages to air as wind and the fifth element as void. These different cultures and even individual philosophers had widely varying explanations concerning their attributes and how they related to observable phenomena as well as cosmology. Sometimes these theories overlapped with mythology and were personified in deities. Some of these interpretations included atomism, but other interpretations considered the elements to be divisible into infinitely small pieces without changing their nature. While the classification of the material world in ancient Indian, Hellenistic Egypt, and ancient Greece into air, earth, fire and water was more philosophical. During the Islamic Golden Age medieval Middle Eastern scientists used practical, experimental observation to classify materials. In Europe, the ancient Greek concept, devised by Empedocles, evolved into the system of Aristotle, which evolved slightly into the medieval system. Which for the first time in Europe became subject to experimental verification in the 1600s, during the scientific revolution. Modern science does not support the classical elements as the material basis of the physical world. Atomic theory classifies atoms into more than a hundred chemical elements such as oxygen, iron, and mercury. These elements form chemical compounds and mixtures, and under different temperatures and pressures, these substances can adopt different states of matter. The most commonly observed states of solid, liquid, gas, and plasma share many attributes with the classical elements of earth, water, air and fire, respectively, but these states are due to similar behavior of different types of atoms at similar energy levels. And not due to containing a certain type of atom or a certain type of substance. The ancient Greek concept of four basic elements, these being earth, water, air and fire, dates from pre-Socratic times and persisted throughout the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. Deeply influencing European thought and culture. The four classical elements of Empedocles and Aristotle illustrated with a burning log. The log releases all four elements as it is destroyed. The Sicilian philosopher Empedocles proved that air was a separate substance by observing that a bucket inverted in water did not become filled with water, a pocket of air remaining trapped inside. Prior to Empedocles, Greek philosophers had debated which substance was the arch, or primordial element from which everything else was made, Heraclitus championed fire, Thales supported water, and Anaximenes plumped for air. Anaximander argued that the primordial substance was not any of the known substances, but could be transformed into them and they into each other. Empedocles was the first to propose four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. He called them the four roots. Plato seems to have been the first to use the term element in reference to air, fire, earth, and water. The ancient Greek word for element, stoikan meant smallest division, a syllable, as the composing unit of an alphabet it could denote a letter in the smallest unit from which a word is formed. In On the Heavens, Aristotle defines element in general, an element, we take it, is a body into which other bodies may be analyzed, present in them potentially or in actuality. And not itself divisible into bodies different in form. That, or something like it, is what all men in every case mean by element. In his On Generation and Corruption, Aristotle related each of the four elements to two of the four sensible qualities, a classic diagram has one square inscribed in the other. With the corners of one being the classical elements, and the corners of the other being the properties. The opposite corner is the opposite of these properties, hot-cold and dry-wet. Aristotle added a fifth element, ether, as the quintessence, reasoning that whereas fire, earth, air, and water were earthly and corruptible, since no changes had been perceived in the heavenly regions. The stars cannot be made out of any of the four elements but must be made of a different, unchangeable, heavenly substance. It had previously been believed by pre-Socratics such as Empedocles and Anaxagoras that ether, the name applied to the material of heavenly bodies, was a form of fire. Aristotle himself did not use the term ether for the fifth element, and strongly criticized the pre-Socratics for associating the term with fire. He preferred a number of other terms indicating eternal movement, thus emphasizing the evidence for his discovery of a new element. These five elements have been associated since Plato's Timaeus with the five Platonic solids. 
A text written in Egypt in Hellenistic or Roman times called the Cor Cosmo ascribed to Hermes Trismegistus, names the four elements fire, water, air and earth. As described in this book, an Isis answer made, of living things, my son, some are made friends with fire, and some with water, some with air, and some with earth, and some with two or three of these, and some with all. And, on the contrary, again some are made enemies of fire, and some of water, some of earth, and some of air, and some of two of them, and some of three, and some of all. For instance, sun, the locust and all flies flee fire, the eagle and the hawk and all high-flying birds flee water, fish, air and earth, the snake avoids the open air. Whereas snakes and all creeping things love earth, all swimming things love water, winged things, air, of which they are the citizens, while those that fly still higher love the fire and have the habitat near it. Not that some of the animals as well do not love fire, for instance salamanders, for they even have their homes in it. It is because one or another of the elements doth form their body's outer envelope. Each soul, accordingly, while it is in its body is weighted and constricted by these four. According to Galen, these elements were used by Hippocrates in describing the human body with an association with the four humors, yellow bile, black bile, blood, and phlegm. Medical care was primarily about helping the patient stay in or return to his slash her own personal natural balance state. The Neoplatonic philosopher Proclus rejected Aristotle's theory relating the elements to the sensible qualities hot, cold, wet, and dry. He maintained that each of the elements has three properties. Fire is sharp, subtle, and mobile while its opposite, earth, is blunt, dense, and immobile. They are joined by the intermediate elements, air and water, in the following fashion. The system of five elements are found in Vedas, especially Ayurveda. The Panchamahabhuta, or five great elements, of Hinduism are, Bhumi or Prthvi, Upas or Jala, Agni or Tejas, Vayu, Vyana or Vada Akasha, Vayam, or Sunya or. They further suggest that all of creation, including the human body, is made of these five essential elements and that upon death, the human body dissolves into these five elements of nature, thereby balancing the cycle of nature. The five elements are associated with the five senses, and act as the gross medium for the experience of sensations. The basest element, earth, created using all the other elements, can be perceived by all five senses hearing, touch, sight, taste, and smell. The next higher element, water, has no odor but can be heard, felt, seen and tasted. Next comes fire, which can be heard, felt and seen. Air can be heard and felt. Akasha is beyond the senses of smell, taste, sight, and touch, it being accessible to the sense of hearing alone. In the Pali literature, the Mahabhuta or Katudatu are earth, water, fire and air. In early Buddhism, the four elements are a basis for understanding suffering and for liberating oneself from suffering. The earliest Buddhist texts explain that the four primary material elements are solidity, fluidity, temperature, and mobility, characterized as earth, water, fire, and air, respectively. The Buddhist teaching regarding the four elements is to be understood as the base of all observation of real sensations rather than as a philosophy. The four properties are cohesion, solidity or inertia, expansion or vibration and heat or energy content. He promulgated a categorization of mind and matter as composed of eight types of kalapas of which the four elements are primary and a secondary group of four are color, smell, taste, and nutriment which are derivative from the four primaries. Thanissara Bhikkhu renders an extract of Shakyamuni Buddhas from Pali into English thus, just as a skilled butcher or his apprentice, having killed a cow, would sit at a crossroads cutting it up into pieces. The monk contemplates this very body however it stands, however it is disposed in terms of properties, in this body there is the earth property, the liquid property, the fire property, and the wind property. Tibetan Buddhist medical literature speaks of the Panchmahabhuta. 17th century alchemical emblem showing the four classical elements in the corners of the image, alongside the tria prima on the central triangle the elemental. System used in medieval alchemy was developed primarily by the anonymous authors of the Arabic works attributed to Jabir ibn Hayyan. This system consisted of the four classical elements of air, earth, fire, and water, in addition to a new theory called the sulfur-mercury theory of metals, which was based on two elements, sulfur. Characterizing the principle of combustibility, the stone which burns, and mercury, characterizing the principle of metallic properties. 
They were seen by early alchemists as idealized expressions of irreducible components of the universe and are of larger consideration within philosophical alchemy. The three metallic principles, sulfur to flammability or combustion, mercury to volatility and stability, and salt to solidity, became the tria prima of the Swiss alchemist Paracelsus. He reasoned that Aristotle's four-element theory appeared in bodies as three principles. Paracelsus saw these principles as fundamental and justified them by recourse to the description of how it burns in fire. Mercury included the cohesive principle, so that when it left in smoke the wood fell apart. Smoke described the volatility, the heat-giving flames described flammability, and the remnant ash described solidity. The Islamic philosophers Al-Kindi, Avicenna and Fakr al-Din al-Razi followed Aristotle in connecting the four elements with the four natures heat and cold, and dryness and moisture. Japanese traditions use a set of elements called the These five are earth, water, fire, wind-slash-air, and void. These came from Indian Vastu Shastra philosophy and Buddhist beliefs. In addition, the classical Chinese elements are also prominent in Japanese culture, especially to the influential Neo-Confucianists during the medieval Edo period. Artist Wolfert, The Four Elements, before 1641 the Aristotelian tradition and medieval alchemy eventually gave rise to modern chemistry, scientific theories and new taxonomies. By the time of Antoine Lavoisier, for example, a list of elements would no longer refer to classical elements. Some modern scientists see a parallel between the classical elements and the four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas and weakly ionized plasma. Modern science recognizes classes of elementary particles which have no substructure and composite particles having substructure. Western astrology uses the four classical elements in connection with astrological charts and horoscopes. The twelve signs of the zodiac are divided into the four elements, fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, and water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. The Dutch historian of science Edward Jan de Hewis writes that the theory of the classical elements was bound to exercise a really harmful influence. As is now clear, Aristotle, by adopting this theory as the basis of his interpretation of nature and by never losing faith in it, took a course which promised few opportunities and many dangers for science. Bertrand Russell says that Aristotle's thinking became imbued with almost biblical authority in later centuries. So much so that ever since the beginning of the 17th century, almost every serious intellectual advance has had to begin with an attack on some Aristotelian doctrine. Thanks for watching.